When you see that fifty-seven twenty-six dollars was spent at Walgreens at eight thirty-one a.m. while you're deployed in Afghanistan, oh my god! Oh, that's so specific, dude. Oh, that is. Oh, that's devastating. Yeah. Guess you gotta always have a plan B. You know what I'm saying? Her ass out of Afghanistan. She just wanted fifty-seven dollars worth of chips, dude. That's why she went to Walgreens. That's awesome. That's great. Okay, let's watch the the Ukrainian uh, military. Hi. That makes sense. Chat, I just oh. got back from Hello, Spare Parts, parts Army. Kitchen I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. Tank, and in today's episode, I want to know if the Russian invasion is as much of a cluster <laughs> as it appears, or are we seeing skewed sources? We're going to analyze if the financial sanctions by NATO are an effective punishment or a blind, gleeful march towards World War III. And we'll answer the question all of us are pondering real hard on. Can Putin actually hope to win this war? This guy's actually done a pretty decent job so far of analyzing it, like way better than other Western sources, if I'm being honest, if I'm being, uh, you know, in real right now. So I don't mind uh, watching his stuff. What I do mind is you seeing the ads at the top of the hour, of course, because at the top of the hour, there's a six second ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do that for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Um, or if you're lucky, you can get gifted a sub. But here's the one minute ad break now. First, we need to look at the Russian assault from the north. We now have video footage compiled from 3D images of that 40 mile long Russian main effort convoy coming from Belarus in the north down to Kiev. The media has yeah, insisted yet, time and time again that this convoy has stalled and jammed up simply because it didn't just cruise straight into Kiev, blasting tattoo on their loudspeakers, shooting everything in sight. Even if. Okay, my respect for this dude grows despite him being a little bit more tactical. Um, too tactical for my liking, specifically because of the Tattoo mention. Tattoo was one of the first music videos. All the things she said uh, was one of the first music videos I ever jerked off to. Fun fact. Let's continue. If that was the case, and the convoy... Also, yes, they're not real lesbians. They were queer baiting. Actually, one of them is like literally homophobic, but don't care. It is completely deadlined, and it might very well be. It would be insane to expect them to drive straight into Kiev after driving for two days straight with no rest. They aren't some kind of advanced Russian robot trucks. They're driven by people. The Russian army would first need to set up a casualty collection point and a forward operating base outside of Kiev before even attempting an assault on the capital. But of course, the media thinks it's as simple as driving right up to Kiev with no preparation. And to be fair, it's a reasonable assumption on their part after seeing the Russians failed the attempt to enter the city the first time, right? And I can certainly understand people saying you need to take that jerk back. That will never, I will never take it back, okay? I don't even feel the slightest bit of guilt or shame for cranking it to that, okay? Just straight up. I will never take it back. I will never unjerk. I will never unjerk that jerk, and I will never, never feel shame for that. Oof and why people think this convoy has stalled, because there are credible reports of fuel supplies running low, soldier morale decreasing, and evidence of Russian vehicles being destroyed and breaking down or abandoned. For example, take a look at this open source intelligence website that has worked to independently verify and confirm all photographic proof of knocked out vehicles on both sides. We can see Russia has lost a whopping 851 vehicles, while Ukraine only lost 248, confirmed knocked out vehicles. But I believe the evidence on the ground also supports the case that what we're really seeing right now is the Russians setting up their headquarters at a safe standoff distance north of Kiev for sustained combat prolonged operations. For instance, take a look at the official report from the That's Ukrainian nice. Ministry of Defense who stated that the Russian forces were spotted just a few days ago on March 5th setting up field logistic camps or forward operating bases around the west of Kiev. We can see on the live conflict map where those red tent icons are located at the cities of Bordankia, Katsukia, and Gavrash have all become military base locations from which they state the Russian army is launching probing attacks against Kiev. These bases are where the Russian army plans to bring their wounded soldiers and damaged vehicles during their eventual assault on Kiev. Lieutenant General Sherry Sheptala, the general of staff in charge of the Ukrainian armed forces, said, quote, in the area of Ivankiv, Russian occupiers are deploying a field site for army aircraft. There's also video proof to support this, 
from Ukrainian citizens who uploaded footage of Russian attack helicopters escorting their armored columns near Kiev now. This was an SOP or standard operating procedure for our troop movements in Iraq to protect against any attacks on our supply convoys. It seems like Russia is using tactics learned from watching past US military operations, yet somehow I'm not in the least bit flattered. Ukrainian General Staff Sheptala reported that there are 18 enemy Russian Bob's just like in Halo? What do you. <laughs> Forward operating bases is just what every military uses. What the fuck? Italian tactical groups in that convoy attempting to advance along Kiev's western flank. There's a total of 3,600 infantry, 180 even said, tanks, as in Halo? and 400 armored infantry transport vehicles in that movement. There is evidence to support that the Russians are having a lot of difficulty advancing to the west here. The Ukrainian armed forces are making the Russians pay for every single inch that they advance. Russia has had limited success in these attempts. They're now within distance of the main supply routes to start setting up control points on the roads leading into Kiev. The goal is to prevent shipments of supplies and weapons from NATO that are reaching the- One of the fobs is in the radiation exclusions, uh, exclusion zone of Chernobyl. You saved me from the Jordan Peterson pipeline. I wonder why they decided the to- I mean, I guess it's wide open space. Won't that literally cause radiation poisoning potentially on, on troops though? Because all the dust that I they like- and my internet is out. All Watching the dust that they literally online. resettle by walking around. It's definitely- it's definitely safe. It's safer than most other places. Um, it's a good way to not get it bombed. Not just increase cancer risk like smoking. It's a super, super uh, safe space to ensure that your forward operating base does not get One touched. Year. It's almost time for that smile. With a direct line into Kiev too. They cleared most of the radioactive topsoil. Didn't they literally increase radioactive? The, they, the, the, what do you call it? The the radiation uh, levels were noticeably increased when you saw troops moving through the the area, though, right? You're, ta you're talking several years down the road with regards to radiation and cancer for Russian soldiers. That was bullshit. I don't I don't see that being bullshit. You can, dude. If you have if you were if you walk through that soil over and over again, and you drive tanks through it and shit, you're like digging deep into the ground. Uh, that area is not. Didn't you debunk it yourself on stream? No, that was a diff that was a power plant. That was an active nuclear power plant. That's the one I debunked. The one I'm talking about is the original increase in radiation levels that were minor, but the radi but the increase in radiation levels that were minor was because they were moving through Chernobyl. And when you were um, eleven months fog, they never touched the red forest. It's still extremely radioactive. Do a charity for Russia? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> the resistance. I know they're gonna use these tactics because these are the same tactics that we used against Iraq. The fact of the matter is that as of Monday afternoon, March 7th, there are still three smaller outskirt cities between Kiev and the Russian convoy that would need to be secured first before they can even think about safely driving that convoy further south down towards Kiev. It's not all doom and gloom. We have this footage of the Ukrainian military striking back with artillery fire on a Russian base just north of Kiev at Kavarachi. It remains to be seen if the recently crippled Russian economy and the dwindling supplies will be able to support this assault through to the end. And we'll get into the repercussions of the sanctions, which Putin calls an act of war. Oh my God. XQ Cow Lounge says, well, politics is war. And in war, truth is the first casualty. What is going on with the juicers, dude? Yo! Juicers are losing it, dude. What the f <laughs> Later in the video. At this point, you might be one of those what is people happening? that are calling for a no-fly zone over Ukraine. You might think that's the only way to help them. But make sure you're not under any illusion as to what exactly you're asking for with that. That is World War. Juicers come into the Hasanabi broadcast for a week because they, they jumped ship when he was watching jubilee videos and they're just like spitting <laughs> you know what i mean juicers are like oh jubilee refugee and then first first chat oh i'm a jubilee refugee then like a week later they're saying that <laughs> nearly two years of great content keep why did you have a hate boner for you it's so weird they don't i mean there are some it's a massive community and uh, a community that has all manner of different politics or three and fine maybe it's unavoidable if putin continues past ukraine it's like 50 -50. and so be it 
But until that no, happens... Everyone literally does hate you, though, is banned from XQC. What the do you know? You've been banned from XQC. There's all kinds of little freaks in the XQC community, okay? Little shitters who uh, yell at uh, Felix every time as well whenever he, like, has a, a normal political perspective or has, like, a woke take. And they're just like, oh, why are you saying this? I Thanks hate this. Screaming. Please stop. Putin hasn't crossed the red line drawn by NATO. Putin clearly has a ton of respect for our red lines. Something I, for one, have no respect for is the Russian army's lack Happy of maintenance. There is video evidence to support the idea that the entire Russian military is facing dry rot problems on their tires, which leads to these tires deflating and the vehicles getting stuck in the mud. This makes me suspicious that maybe the money sent to the Russian military generals that was meant for upgrading their vehicles has instead gone directly into their pockets. Yes, thank you so much for these rubles, Putin. I will definitely spend them on maintenance for my entire brigade. Two hours later. Woo! Party in Moscow! And if that were the case, it would be ironic because that's exactly the kind of corruption that Putin himself was accused of committing while he was in the KGB stationed at St. Petersburg in the 1990s. You know, back before he destroyed any chance of Russia having a democracy. Now, it might seem strange to you that all these trucks and tanks are getting stuck in the mud. Aren't these soldiers trained on how to drive in Moscow? But it's actually easier than you might think to miscalculate if a dirt road is capable of handling your armored vehicle. In Iraq, a lot of dirt roads that we drove over were tricky. Sure, I could drive my 2008 Toyota Camry over it, no problem, but a 30-ton armored vehicle gets stuck. Okay, dude, homie has a 2008 Toyota Camry. Respect. My respect is growing. My respect is growing right now, okay? Two years. In the same That's dirt really road, bugged. like quicksand. Right One time, we also ended up getting second squad's armored vehicles stuck in the mud trying to recover us with their tow cables, so you can see how quickly the whole thing becomes a sh show. So what's stopping us from confirming any of these reports about what's happening in Kiev? Heavy cloud cover over northern Ukraine started on March 2nd, and this made it impossible for us to view more live satellite image updates of the Russian convoy. Weather reports indicate that we can expect cloud cover to dissolve by Thursday, March 10th. So when do I think this next phase of the assault will start? Well, if the Russian military's actions in past wars like Chechnya in 1994 and George- Start talking about your ex, babe? First of all, I still drive it. I drove it on Monday. Thanks, Hassan. Fuck you mean? In 2008, are any indication, then we can expect artillery shelling and air raids for a week or two before infantry will attempt a second assault. Ukrainian regular infantrymen are quoted as saying, do it, you won't. But what's happening on the other, southernmost axis of advance? And how might that progress there affect the defense of the capital? Using our open source military intelligence map, we can see that in southern Ukraine, near Crimea, where the Russians are advancing from, it's a more dry and arid landscape. So it's been easier for Russian troops to make mad gains there without getting stuck in the mud. On Thursday, March 3rd, the Russian forces launched an assault on the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant with over 100 armored vehicles. So that's several battalion tactical groups. We see video footage of Ukrainian civilians attempting to blockade the streets leading up to the power plant. These groups were dispersed with warning shots and concussion grenades by the advancing Russian military. By securing the power plant, it gives the Russians the strategic ability to add additional pressure on the Ukrainian armed forces by being able to turn off the electricity. It's like my old squad leader used to always say, Cappy, don't play war near the nuclear power plant. Now there are several theories surrounding the battle Chat that was waged here. One is that Putin ordered artillery strikes on or near the power plant as a kind of implicit threat to all of Europe. In this scenario, he's trying to tell us that he's super serial about his threat to drop nukes. Lovely. The other possibility is that it was an incompetent local Russian artillery commander who was too busy indiscriminately shelling everything to bother to check if he was yeeting rounds near a nuclear power plant. Truthfully, neither of those options are very comforting. The third scenario is that the artillery shelling wasn't actually happening anywhere near the power plant and the media just got carried away with hysterics. But we can actually go one step That's further to try to confirm these reports. We can see from this video that was posted, it claims to be near the power plant. Now you see the church in the foreground. That's a good visual point of reference for us to start confirming this report. So by searching satellite images and looking for religious buildings in the area of Anardogar, Ukraine, where the power plant is, 
we can easily confirm sure. and identify Sometimes the exact location where this video was taken. Early. It's and within five kilometers distance that from that the power plant, so the reports sound so accurate. In the city of Maripol, it's 220 kilometers to the east from the power plant's location. This is where one of the most important pitched battles of the war is currently underway. 16. Now, a pitch battle means a campaign that's been planned way ahead of time and takes place at a strategically important location. Basically, not some random skirmish where you and your boys run into the enemy randomly. Elements of the Russian advance from the south in Crimea and from their advance in the east Donbass region are starting to link up with each other to encircle the strategically important town of Maripol. Careful you don't touch cannon tips. The reason this city is so vital to both sides is because it's home to the Ukrainian key steel and iron production plants. It's a port city where Russia could easily drop off reinforcements from their troop carrier ships that have so far been waiting in the Sea of Azov. Lieutenant General Sheptala, the Ukrainian general staff in charge of the army, launched a counterattack and was able to destroy a few Russian vehicles outside of the city. But so far, this has been yet to prevent the Russian advance. We now know that the early reports of an amphibious assault in the country were false. It's logical to assume that the Russians will conduct an amphibious landing once the ground forces have already secured these ports. An empathetic leftist. The f line. Yo, dude, are you okay? Why are you like eating $3 donos over and over again? What the? F what is happening, dude? Bro, stop. Holy shit. Crazy. Oh, one second. I gotta look at this real quick. Dude, no, this is like, hold on. I gotta, I gotta ban this dude. Yeah, no, it is, it is like what you're saying in the chat straight up. He made a, he made a specific, he made a specific account just to like, he made a new email just to dono saying that he's, uh, unwell Oop, ip ban get help brother cities and the reason for this is a contested beach landing is chaos and it would mean higher casualties for a vulnerable landing force on a difficult beach terrain the other key seaport in the country is 400 kilometers to the west at the city of odessa there is video footage of ukrainian armed forces setting up metal tank barriers all along the city so they've dug in and they're ready to contest any amphibious landing attempt in order to take the city of Odessa, the Russian advancing from Crimea towards the west have captured the first major city in the country called Kherson. They were able to capture it three or four days ago on March 3rd. Ukraine sent out intelligence telegram reports that the people should not believe any news broadcasts coming from their public TV station there because it is now in the hands of the occupying Russian forces. This is the totally legit Ukrainian broadcast system. Just wanted to let everyone know Comrades, good time to lay down your arms and uh, surrender to us. I mean, surrender to the Russian army. Some of those guys, they seem like nice guys, you know. The Russian army continued 55 kilometers north to the city of Makalov, where they've been met with stronger resistance, which has stopped them and prevented them from reaching Odessa. There is video from this region of a Russian attack helicopter being shot down by a Ukrainian man pad launched just outside the city of Makalov. We're going to see the Russian military. Like when they, when, I mean, I didn't know if they were going to show anything else, but, um, no, 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 that's fine. That's fine. That, that you can watch. It's just, it, it doesn't happen. Um, as long as it doesn't show like the actual casualties, but like, what, what are the, what do, what do people think? What do people think? Like, where, where do people think the man pads come from? You think like Ukraine made man pads? Like you think that's where it came from? Like, you think that that is just, you know, NATO countries. That's where it's coming from. That's what it is. Okay, let's continue. Adapt all of their techniques for how they're doing this war. They're going to get more brutal in the face of these failures. On March 4th, there is video evidence of a Russian army static artillery platoon being destroyed there. According to the live conflict map, a Russian supply convoy was ambushed 25 kilometers north of the city, and they were destroyed by Ukraine. This was a strategy used against the United States in Iraq all of the time. Insurgents knew that supply trucks were what is called a soft target. The Russian army has clearly been increasing the tempo of air and artillery strikes. This is a red flag that should cause alarm bells for anyone who's even slightly familiar with the recent history of how Russian army approaches warfare. History often repeats itself with the same amount of originality it's found in a Hollywood sequel. In many ways, this invasion reminds me of their first- Bro, this dude literally rips on the 
Iraq invasion regularly, it's kind of interesting to see. Or or his comparisons to Iraq, I, I don't think he's like a fan of, of what he did in Iraq, it seems like. First invasion of Chechnya in 1994. The Russian army assaulted from three different directions, expecting these convoys to quickly take the capital. In that war, there were also untrained conscripts who were first sent in and met more resistance than they expected at the Chechen capital of Grozny. They then bombed the city of Grozny into rubble. I believe that it looks like the Russian army learned from at least one mistake from the Chechen war. They've refrained from committing any large amount of armored convoys into invading any city just yet. Video evidence shows that the Russian army has mostly sent in light infantry in recon missions. We've seen that they've made a lot of use of those light Tiger Jeeps on these initial movements into the city. This is a new approach that we haven't seen from past Russian invasions. The Russian truck drivers are trying to improvise already. We saw photos of them ghetto rigging wooden logs nailed to the front of their vehicles as a form of medieval armor. But to be fair, you'd be surprised. Dog, what the f Dude, they need to learn. Maybe this is why they need the Syrians to come to Ukraine. This is like, this is, this is the absolute worst, dude. Holy shit. The absolute worst, dude. The average, the average Arab, okay, can whip together. The average Arab can whip together a, a better defense system than this in literally under five minutes, dude. He's wrong. That's for crossing muddy roads. What do you mean? That's for getting unstuck, not armor. I how backwards the U.S. military can be, too. I remember my armored striker and I The wooden logs are for the bridges on the back of the trucks, not armor or something. It's to make it easier to drive over. Truck, all I see is a tree. In Iraq, we had to stack piles of sandbags under our feet in the back of the vehicles because there was barely any armor underneath the old version of the vehicle. How pathetic is it to be sitting in a $2 million vehicle, but our best defense was free dirt stuffed into two cent burlap sacks. To me, this is evidence that every military sucks. It's just about which military sucks the least. Moving 400 kilometers to the north in Ukraine's second largest city of Kharkiv, the Russians have been attempting to level large portions of the city with artillery attacks. That's because their armored personnel carriers did not have, it did not have armor underneath it and improvised explosive devices would make short, would make short work of an entire armored, you know, IEDs. Yeah, the IEDs would just rip them he didn't mention the ieds he just said like there was no armor underneath it but similar to the strategy used in their past battles in chechnya look at that every single one of those red markers is an artillery or airstrike the ukrainian general staff lieutenant general sheptala reported a large concentration of russian forces setting up headquarters and regrouping on the west side of the city but they've already destroyed some armored vehicles from there russia has not yet initiated any new large-scale ground attacks on any city as of Monday, March 7th. We know there are 23 Russian battalion tactical groups that are making their way into position in that area. That means 4,600 infantry, 230 main battle tanks, and about 1,000 infantry fighting vehicles. While that might sound ominous for the Ukrainian armed forces stationed in the city of Kharkiv, there is the fact that the Russian army has yet to prove that they can successfully conduct large scale co What if they're waiting for the military coverage to, I mean uh, the the media coverage to cool? I don't think it's uh, it's more so about the media coverage to cool. Was the 40 mile convoy fake? No, they're just staging. They're waiting to into a forward operating base according to task and purpose, which is this video is uh, made by. Um they're building they're building supply lines along the way so they can get uh, resupply set up and they're also yeah, they're also like uh, trying to move in to a forward operating base. Also cutting off in the West. I mean, what if it really is a training exercise? They seem pretty out of practice. No. Is this a Russia Today vid or are they just using Russia Today footage? No, they're using Russia Today footage because Russia Today still has a lot of, uh, you know, they still show like Russian troop positions and shit like that. Whereas, unfortunately, in the United States of America and Western media, you never see about you never see anything from the Russian side unless it's like literally a bombed out uh, carcass of a tank or some shit to celebrate the epic destruction footage. So there's no way to there's no way to fully comprehend what the Russians are doing, what they are trying to do, or what they have accomplished thus far. Coordinated attacks on an urban center. One of the key pieces of Russian military equipment that is operating towards this end is the 9K-720 Iskander mobile missile vehicles Kinda. operating there. 
We know it's launching warheads from the other side of the border, from the safety of Belarus, near the town of Mazar. These massive missiles have a max range of over 500 kilometers. The 9K-720 mobile Russian missile launcher can fire at least seven Jesus different Christ. types of conventional warheads, including a cruise missile, a thermobaric fuel air explosive blast, a high explosive fragmentation warhead, and an electromagnetic pulse for anti-radar missions. They also claim to have bunker busting munitions. It could even fire a tactical nuke if it was asked to. Resupplying those missile systems are important to the Russian military and their siege doctrine. Under the current economic sanctions levied against Russia in response to this Ukrainian invasion, they will find it increasingly difficult to repair and maintain their army in Ukraine, where they get most of their supplies and the tools for repairing their military from Germany. So this brings us to our next question. We need to address whether or not Putin can win a prolonged war in Ukraine. Now, I might not always have the right answers because these issues are complex and difficult, but I'm willing to test my theories with you in this public forum, and hopefully your scrutiny helps us update our understanding and sharpen our knowledge. Trust me, I, I wonder if people call him a uh, Putin apologist or whatever for this stuff. You know what it's like to be wrong. I was one of those genius privates that got married right before I deployed. In order to answer <laughs> whether Putin can win Dude, or not, I love this guy. What the f Okay, I'm sorry. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, dude. Oh no. Jody came for him. You just need to act like you're a vet? What do you mean? We need to look at his stated conditions for victory. If Russia is able to negotiate to hold on to parts of eastern Ukraine, it will likely be worth it for him in the long term. Now, there are some people that want us to believe that the US orchestrated some coup in 2014 in Ukraine. But I refuse to believe that the same US government that couldn't stand up the Afghan army after two trillion dollars in 20 years. After the fiasco and Okay, that's that's a little different. These are two separate branches, okay? US soft power, diplomacy, and statecraft uh, or is is entirely separate than than, you know, uh, the the military division, okay? Let's be let's be fair here. Uh so that's one. And two, it doesn't even matter uh because there was legitimate and viable uh, anger justified frustration towards the the putin puppet like putin aligned uh leader at the time does your this special video comments come to youtube wait what do you mean when you see that 57 26 dollars was spent at walgreens at 8 31 a.m while you're deployed in afghanistan oh my god oh that's so specific dude Oh, that is, oh, that's devastating. I yeah. guess you gotta always have a plan B, you know what I'm saying? Your ass out of Afghanistan. She just wanted $57 worth of chips, dude. That's why she went to Walgreens. In Afghanistan, you can almost forgive Putin for thinking that the U.S. was incapable of standing up the Ukrainian army after only eight years and three billion dollars. That was a miscalculation on Russia. You pay $57 for plan B? What the f*** is 10 bucks in Turkey? All right, mother. Well, you know, why? Well, okay. Yeah. We don't welcome to the United States of America. Okay. Where this, everything is incredibly expensive, especially when it comes to healthcare. Also 10 bucks in Turkey is like million Turkish lira. So chill. KW. <laughs> Adamların derdine bak. Ne kadar Putinci varsa ne anlatıyor bu Amerikalılar? Anyway deep drama AK. <gülüyor> Komünist. Amına koyayım bu chat niye bu kadar çok hızlı? Saçları üçe vur. Dude, this Russia's part. The lesson here is no one can force a people to do something that they don't already really want to do on a deep level. We can't just take the agency away from millions of people in Ukraine and the average soldiers on the ground there who are clearly dead set on democracy and fighting Putin to the very last man. You can't just create that out of thin air. But the idea that the US is some kind of puppet master pulling the strings is to give us too much credit. It's nice of you to say, and it's flattering. I wish we could take credit, but the evidence just isn't there. But to be fair, Putin definitely has historical justification for being paranoid about the CIA trying to meddle in Ukraine. I believe Zelensky is the right leader in Ukraine, and there's clearly- Whoa, what? 
Wait, did he just say that? Definitely has his take credit, but the evidence just isn't there. But to be fair, Putin definitely has historical justification for being paranoid about the CIA trying to meddle in Ukraine. Yo, what? Dude, this dude's awesome. What the f This guy completely wrong? Yeah, totally, dude. Totally. America would never do that and never has done that and never will continue to do that. That's crazy. Wow, this dude's awesome. I believe Zelensky is the right leader in Ukraine, and there's clearly a direct causal connection between his bravery and the NATO countries finding their own balls and deciding to use these unprecedented financial sanctions against Russia. But we can't ignore that there is a dark side to these financial sanctions that no one seems willing to talk about. If you mention how drastic these sanctions are, I'll see how much your takes are the same as RT's. Like what? Why are we watching RT? Dude, you are so stupid, dude. Oh my God. We should let Ukraine into NATO. Yeah, we should. Okay. Also, this isn't even uh, Russia today, dumbass. This is an American bet talking about Russia's military chances. I, for one, think it's uh, inappropriate to just <laughs> decide to nuke the rest of the planet. You know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. I think I'm not a fan of that <laughs> bargain. That gamble that you are so willingly uh, able to do. He wasn't even asking for nukes. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. This is asking, nay, demanding nuclear war. You do not have the mental faculties to comprehend this for some weird reason. Okay? There is a reason why Brandon and all these other NATO countries are not sending in NATO troops into Ukraine. What the f are you talking about? Why do you think? that they're not doing that. Can you imagine a world in which like even the American administration, the American foreign policy apparatus in its entirety is anti-NATO involvement, but dumbass random chatters are like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, brother, let's go, let's go. Also, it's not Russia Today that we're watching. You dummy, we're watching, please, for a second. Yeah, task and purpose, known Russian propaganda. Like you, you, you're losing the libs. You're losing liberals in the chat. You'll seem sympathetic to Russia. Imagine if you woke up tomorrow and your money, your life savings was worth 30% less. That's what happened to your average Russian citizen. By removing Russia from the SWIFT payment system, we've crippled their economy. And now I hear US officials calling for us to cut off purchases of Russian oil. Sure, that's understandable. We want to strike back. We want to punish Russia for the carnage in Ukraine. The problem is that we might be unknowingly clapping and cheering our way straight into World War III with these sanctions. The West is gambling that these sanctions might cause Putin to give up or a revolution by the regular Russian people. A lot of people are not aware that prior to the bombing of Pearl Harbor, prior to World War II, the US government cut off oil supplies to Japan. Japan's army was left in a situation where they had enough gas for about a year and a half. The Japanese empire did a cost benefit analysis and they determined that their best course of action was to bomb the US in response to hope to get them to send them oil again. On the other hand, I understand NATO has no real other option here. Fate is dragging us in a scary direction. What's becoming clear is that this war will have far reaching consequences that will affect all of us around the globe. This is awesome. and it might take a month to start feeling those negative financial effects. The American I was wrong, dude. When he said he was army infantry, I thought he was a boot, like straight up. And I was wrong. His first video was pretty good, but then uh, this video is just like showing that he is not like the most boot take usually is just like they hate us because they ain't us brother they hate us because they l hate our freedoms like i i think he's not like that at all i mean he he definitely boots it up when he's like doing tactical like soy face war shit but other than that he's i mean it's pretty good his his analysis is really good mike preisner i mean dude there's plenty of vets that i uh, that are in this community whom i love okay there's not I'm not like, uh, I'm not like immediately anti everyone that's served. That's crazy. I've, I literally have Peggy on too. He's, he's vet. American people got lucky and the majority of citizens didn't really have to sacrifice at all during the Iraq and Afghanistan war. The idea must seem alien to most US citizens. Putin might be betting that we do not have any resolve or ability to suffer because of rising prices due to this conflict. I think if that's his bet, then he's in for another surprise. I've included links to all of my research in the description. If you're interested in viewing a copy of my Google- My mistake, I thought I saw RT logo on the video, I was wrong. 
Okay, it's nice of you to admit that you're wrong, but just like remember that uh, you know you're being incredibly horny to f disprove. And also, the take that you're most wrong about is not the Russia Today one, but specifically the one where you are um, you know advocating to bomb bomb uh, Russian forces with NATO troops or NATO uh, air force uh, NATO nation uh, uh, air support. Okay. The video is done. What do you mean stop stun locking? Google Docs, scripts, and my own open source intelligence. I like this dude. Um, Azan can't resist a man in uniform. Yes. Do you agree with Pentagon that we should not accept Poland's MiG-29s and then give those to Ukraine? I don't know what uh, Russia's response will be if that's the case. I do fear that Russia will see that as a provocation. So I don't know. I don't know what the fuck that would happen. Did you reach Radan and Eldering? Dude, I destroyed Radan for the record. All right, let's watch this now. South Korea's untouchable families. We're moving away from Russia to South Korea. Look at your boy. What the f*** is he doing now? <laughs> Dude, what? Why is he wearing the helmet with the night vision goggles when it's light out? Wait, doesn't that literally destroy his eyes? What is happening? It's not on, right? Trying to find some bitches, I bet. <laughs> True! Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>